Thanks so much for talking to us. It's an honor to meeting you because I love Defiance. I just see season one. Season two is uh, now laying on my bed and I have to do it next week because I got the Blu-ray now. And uh, so I'm really excited to see it. So um, what attracts you on the show? What is, what is your reason for um, being a, a part of Defiance? Um, oh, what's my reason for being part of Defiance is a big question. Um, I'm now, three, three years later, I'm invested in the show. Uh, now uh, I know my character like I know myself and, and I care about his future, which is really strange. Uh, it's a very strange experience, almost like living two lives in parallel once you've played a character for a long time. Um, in the beginning, when we first came to Defiance, it, it was different. I, I always look for two things. Uh, I look for characters that I haven't played before, and that's very important to me. And the second thing I look for are stories I haven't read or I haven't heard, I haven't seen. And uh, when I came across the script for Defiance, I came across a story that I hadn't seen or heard told. And, and that was wonderful uh, and very rare. Funnily enough, even in an in industry as big as um, Hollywood and, and Los Angeles can be, uh, it, it is rare to find a new story. So it was lovely to come across the script and the character I fell in love with, particularly the relationship between the father and the daughter, um, between Nolan and Arissa. That's what really drew me to the show. Arissa is really, really sweet. But I think there will be no romance between you and uh, Arissa in the show because um, uh, you, you told about the father thing. But what do you think? Will there, will there maybe some kind of chance for a romance? Because I think both, 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 both uh, guys be, belong to each other, in, in my opinion. Ah, it's an interesting question. Um, they're not related, but uh, I think he sees her very much as his child. And I think she sees him very much as her father. Uh, like, a, like an adopted parent and an adopted child. Um, there's nothing official between them, but I think that's very much what their bond is. And, uh, and they choose that bond. The wonderful thing about that relationship to me is, is it's, they've chosen it. They've chosen to love one another. And, and these are two people who don't love anyone else uh, in the world and, and find love a very, very difficult thing. So the fact that they've found each other and that they can do that is amazing. There are many scenes with physical action in the uh, show. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Jerry um, Doyle told us yesterday some very nice stuff from uh, Babylon 5, mm -hmm. where he set him on fire by chance because it's some, some kind of a... Um, um, they set him on fire by yeah, chance? Yeah, a, a stunt uh, uh, does come oh, wrong. Oh, it went wrong. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Do you no have any, anything equal like some, some stunts that uh, went wrong? Maybe you have... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got plenty of stunts went wrong. Right now, I've shot 11 episodes of season three. And my right wrist isn't working properly. I, I can't actually do much with my right wrist. And one of my legs is a little strange right now. Uh, one of my knees is a bit gone. It's not functioning properly. I've got strange bruises on my body. And uh, I'm finding it very hard to get out of bed. So that's pretty much where I'm at every year. In fact, I'm very proud of myself this year because I'm functioning much better, much at a much higher like ability than normally by this part of the series so I normally get pretty beat up and uh, and by the end of any series it really takes me about a month to two months before I can get out of bed and uh, feel good again but that's cool I enjoy it there'll come a day when I roll out of bed and I say I can't do it anymore but not yet but is there anything that you wouldn't do for the show? Or would you say, no, I do every stunt because hopefully it looks... Well, now that I know that Babylon 5 lets its actors be set on fire, yeah. I want to do fire gags. So I'm going to go back to work on Tuesday and I'm going to say, uh, I want to be put on fire. Because Babylon 5 did it, so why can't I do it? Uh, there's a couple of things they won't let me do. They won't... I do all my own car stuff. Oh, well, I mean, I may do all my own car stuff if that were legal. Uh, I, but I'm not allowed to do wire pulls when they pull you through the air on a wire. Apparently that's really, really bad. I really won't do them too because the more they say I can't do them, the more interested I am. Um, and there's one other thing I'm not allowed to do and I can't remember what it is because I've done everything else on the show. Maybe it's the fire. Maybe it's the fire I'm not allowed to do. So I might have to accidentally get set on fire. If you can uh, relay to me how you go about getting accidentally set on fire and they have to accidentally get on, set on fire on the show because I'd be interested in exploring that.
My stuntman on Defiance recently came back on the show after being on Hannibal. And <laughs> he, he, I said, what have you been doing? I haven't seen you for a week. And he said, oh, um, they set me on fire. Naked. That's great. <laughs> I won't tell you the rest because I don't want to spoil their show. But uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, my stuntman gets to have all the fun. Mm -hmm. Do you have some funny memories from the set for us? Maybe some things uh, get wrong that should not go wrong? Yeah, well, there's always things that go wrong that shouldn't go wrong. Um, just on Thursday of last week, uh, we were shooting on the side of a hill and sometimes they put uh, smoke or mist behind us. It, it makes the environment look a little more scary and, uh, and, and, and a little more uncertain, you know, that anything could be out there. Um, and so Stephanie and I were shooting at, 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 at something very, very bad that was coming to kill us. And we had to turn and run away. And when we turn around to run away, they pumped so much smoke on the side of the hill that we actually could have run straight into a tree. We couldn't see a foot in front of our face. So we went running off through the forest, but we just disappeared into a cloud of smoke. Uh, so they all had to call cut and wait for the entire forest to kind of clear of smoke before we could shoot again. And we were sitting in the middle of the whole thing, giggling like two school children, hiding from them until the smoke cleared. And the last question, you've been here at FatCon for the first time, Europe's biggest uh, science fiction convention. It's my favorite convention in the world. So what do you um, enjoy at FatCon and how was your, was your time at FatCon until now? This is uh, my first FatCon and it's, uh, it's amazing. This is, this is incredible in that it's all science fiction. Um, I, I was having a conversation yesterday about uh, Comic-Con and how Comic-Con has become about so many things. It's about marketing now. This is in San Diego, you know. It's, uh, there's the comic books, but there's also games, and there's you know now there's kind of uh, you know uh, graphic novels. There's the com um, cartoons. Oh goodness! And then there's shows. So it's about many many things. And most of the cons I've gone to around the world have been about a great many different media, also subject matter and different genres. This one being all about science fiction has been absolutely wonderful because it's so concentrated and it's such a specific fan base and everybody speaks the same language and the fans all know the lineage, the, the line of shows all the way from the original Star Trek and all the way down. I was doing a panel last night and I was talking about an English show that I used to love when I was a kid, uh, Space 1999, and everyone, everyone knew that show. Whereas when I'm in America, nobody knows that show because that show wasn't really aired very much there. So that's what's wonderful about a, a science fiction audience. And they'll go back and they'll find the old shows and they'll watch them all on Netflix or on, um, or on Apple TV. You know, uh, science fiction fans are uh, thorough. There's no better researchers in the world than science fiction fans. Okay, thank you so much for taking your time.